Hello again everyone, welcome back to PTAC Chemistry Channel. So this is part two of these uh, states of matter uh, lecture tutorial. This is for the um, Cambridge International O level, uh, which is also equivalent to the Cambridge International uh, GCSE or any 14 to 16 years old curriculum all around the world, including the UK based GCSE curriculum. So for this uh, bit of the learning objective candidates, meaning these 14 to 16 years old students, you should be able to describe and explain. So these are uh, uh, detail so you need a bit of details and this is in terms of kinetic particle theory so the last bit of the lecture tutorial I mentioned about kinetic particle theory which means you must talk about what happens to the particles if if they ask you you know it explain these changes of state change of state basically changing between solid to liquid to gas or backwards you must talk about what happens to the particles because this is kinetic particle theory this is the beginning of chemistry where we talk about what happens to the particles these are the terms that you must get used to as stated in the syllabus the syllabus basically lists all this learning outcome learning objective as you are revising you must learn to put a tick on it the first time you go through it and then you have to spend time to go through revision yourself and put a second tick when you are happy with it before you actually do the work you must review back the concept and of course before a topical test or before an exam you put further ticks on your learning objective because uh, by then you will be recapping a third time or a fourth time you should be comfortable with it and do not put a tick on it and move on unless you're comfortable with it okay and you also need to interpret and explain so there's a new term there interpret and explain in terms of heating as well as cooling okay heating you will need to absorb energy so what actually absorb energy the particles absorb energy and when you are cooling the particles will release energy so you know in physics you talk about energy changes even in lower secondary science you talk about energy changes but this is upper secondary and this is chemistry so we talk about kinetic particle theory again what happened at the particulate level at that level you do not just talk about what you see outside but what is happening to the particles the thing you cannot see with your eyes but we know there are certain properties that are a result of what happened to it at the particular level. Changes of state. So we know that there are three states of matter in the last lecture tutorials. Uh, we already covered the specific properties and uh, the arrangement, the movement, uh, as well as the separation of particles. And you should be able to draw the model going from solid to liquid to gases. As you know, solid particles are tightly packed. So you would draw them as like this, tightly packed kind of like uh, the they are kind of like touching each other whereas if you have liquid they are kind of like closely packed but there is a bit more separation in between and when you have gases they are very far apart uh, very disorderly whereas this is orderly uh, packed together in terms of the name of the changes of state solid goes to liquid that is called melting and then uh, liquid goes to gas that is called boiling or evaporation but you know from lower secondary boiling takes place only at boiling point so there's no other temperature that boiling will happen but evaporation you can leave your uh, wet clothing wet laundry outside on a hot day and the water will evaporate away and you will you know pick up the dry cloth afterwards so obviously the water turns into gas it escapes but then the sun is not exactly boiling the water it simply evaporates of the water because evaporation happens at any temperature below the melting point so you know uh, there's the main difference between uh, between boiling and also evaporation is to do with the temperature at which that happened but then there's also another differences which is to do with the rate the rate mean how fast are they happening when you are cooking instant noodles you boil water so obviously there is continuously boiling and the rate at which you go from liquid to gas this is at a faster rate because once you reach the boiling point the liquid all the liquid particles have enough energy to go into gas whereas you know when you are 
doing evaporations. You hang out your laundry, but you don't collect them one minute after that because you need to give it some time in order for the um. Uh, in order for the water to evaporate off your laundry, uh, it probably take a couple of hours, depending on how strong the, the intensity of the, the, the sunshine that you get where you are based at. All right, so uh, let me just correct that. Let's talk about this kind of curve. This is a diagram. This is a graph. Importantly, when you're dealing with any graph, you need to look at the axis. I talked about in the last uh, tutorial, last lecture tutorials, this is a label of the heading and then a stroke and then the units. Units, label. Okay, very important. This is a unit of time. Could be in second or minute or hours, but we're just labeling as time in second here. And because this is temperature, I talk about uh, when I went through the question last time, melting point. How do you define melting point? Melting point is the temperature at which a substance, so this substance will change in states of matter. So it turns from, from solid to liquid and then how do you define boiling point so this is the temperature at which a substance turns from uh, liquid to gas so you know you need to know that these are temperature and they are they are defined as the temperature okay so boiling point it's not the same as evaporation point because evaporation can happen at any temperature, although at a slower rate compared to boiling. Notice a few important features in this graph. First of all, I want you to think about what happens going from solid to liquid to gas. As I talk about uh, what happens just now with the molecular level, I'm going to move this diagram to here, and then you can see what happens. Um, in terms of the particles because there is kinetic particle theory what happened to the particle what happened to the particle well you can see the the particles get further apart so particles get further apart and uh, they become disorderly so they become disorderly they go from ordered arrangement to become disordered arrangement go from ordered arrangement of particles in the solid state to become disordered. Disorder means uh, they are free to move, whereas here you can only vibrate above fixed position. What you notice also, this is temperature. So when your y-axis increases in value, your temperature increases. So this thing in green, temperature increases. This thing in green, temperature increases. Okay, so this thing in green, temperature increases. This thing in green, temperature increases temperature increases temperature is actually a measure of kinetic energy what is very important something you might have uh, gotten used to in lower secondary you keep on thinking temperature is hot and cold no 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 okay temperature has a definition temperature is a measure of your average kinetic energy of your particles so it depends on how much kinetic energy of your particles Remember last lecture tutorials, I talked about the speed of solid particles vibrate about fixed positions. We talk about liquid particles flow, uh, sorry, not flow, uh, they slide past each other. So they are moving a little bit more than that at a slightly faster speed because they don't vibrate. This vibrate, this doesn't vibrate. They can slide past each other. Gas particles move randomly, move freely in all directions at very high speed. So kinetic energy increases because temperature increases because your particles, your particles absorb energy. Your particles absorb energy. As you supply the energy in terms of temperature, they gain more kinetic energy, they move faster. Temperature increases because they move faster then. How about the point where the temperature doesn't change? Look at this pink area. This pink area, the temperature doesn't change. Very, 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 very important. Okay, Temperature remain constant. Temperature is constant there at the melting point. That is going from solid to liquid. And at the melting point, you have both solid and also liquid. At the boiling point, at the boiling point, you have both liquid and gas particles. Temperature is not changing during change of state. 
at the melting point is your change of state you do not have a change in temperature at the boiling point you have change of state you do not have a change in temperature because during change of state that temperature that you are supplying the heat is still being absorbed the particles are still absorbing heat here but why temperature doesn't change because that absorption the energy you absorb is not going to the speed that is why temperature doesn't change temperature is a measure of your average kinetic energy if speed doesn't change average kinetic energy doesn't change where does the energy go to because energy is neither created nor destroyed you absorb energy but it's not going to the kinetic energy so no change in speed here no change in speed you cannot say they move faster you cannot say they move faster because there is no change in temperature instead at the change of state melting point and boiling point what happened is you you take in the heat so that means you absorb the heat that is being used to overcome the attraction between the particles they use this word called interaction uh, later on in structure and bonding we will call them forces of attraction this is the proper word to use i am just introducing it to you a bit earlier we call them forces of attraction between the particles what makes you think they stick together they stick together not because of magnet but because there's forces of attraction between the particles and you are overcoming the forces attraction that make them tightly pack so that you are separating them further apart and then from liquid to gas you need a lot more energy to be taken in to be absorbed in order to separate them even further apart and that is why uh, boiling usually takes a bit longer than melting point because you need a lot more energy to convert well to separate them a bit further compared to you know going from solid to liquid okay but you melt first before you go to uh before you go to the liquid state and then and then you boil and then you can go to the gaseous state this is called a heating curve because you absorb energy you as the particle needs to absorb energy in going from solid to liquid to gas there's only a change in temperature uh, when you are heating a solid they vibrate faster they slide past each other a bit faster they move randomly in all direction a bit faster but there's no change in temperature at the melting point there's no change in temperature at the boiling point because there's no change in temperature we call it temperature is constant there is no change in speed no change in kinetic energy because the energy that you're absorbing is being used to overcome or to break the forces of attraction between the particles overcome means to break the interactions or the forces of attractions between the particles that is why you know there's no change in speed there instead the particles are slowly separating apart there you get both states of matter during change of state and what actually happened also is um um, I forgot what I was going to say already. But anyway, let's move on. This, on the other hand, is called a cooling curve. So a cooling curve is the opposite of heating curve. Going from left to right, you can hopefully see that as time progresses, it goes from gas to liquid to solid. I am just going to copy paste some diagram, which are what happened to the uh, particular, uh, what happened to the particles. The, that is called kinetic particle theory because it is what happened to the particle you must be able to explain kinetic particle theory in terms of what happened to the particles should probably use blue color to be consistent uh, so you know the particles are very far apart the particles are not as far apart but they are not tightly packed they are closely packed with a little bit of space in between these are tightly packed where they can only vibrate about fixed positions so here the particles are getting closer together so you get particles get closer together why do the particles get closer together because you know they lose they lose energy they lose kinetic energy they move slower they lose kinetic energy they move slower so that means their speed their speed decreases their separation also decreases so separation depends on how far uh, you are attracted to each other and of course they become closer together so the forces of attraction 
forces of attraction uh, between the particles increases or gets stronger between the particles get stronger this is the opposite of heating curve when we were heating we supply energy to break or to overcome the interaction between the particles going from here to here we are cooling and therefore we are forming the forces of attraction between particles instead of breaking we are forming and when we form bonds when we form bonds or we form forces of attraction what happened is we have to release produce that means it release heat energy so the particles release energy it's the opposite of heating curve based on the syllabus interpret explain heating and cooling curve when you are heating the particles will absorb the energy whereas when you are cooling the particles will release the energy to the surrounding the outside okay what we see from the outside then we need to explain in terms of what happened to the particles that is called kinetic particle theory again boiling point they call this boiling point even though we call this condensation because condensation is going from uh, gas to liquid but it is the exact same temperature as going from liquid to gas because we are just interconverting uh, uh, between the states melting point is equal to the freezing point because they are equal and opposite for freezing you're going from solid to li oops, sorry, liquid to solid remember that anything could freeze if you are a pure substance and then melting point is going from solid to liquid that happened at the same temperature but it's just equal and opposite the same idea applies to what i had explained previously for heating curve the temperature will drop the temperature will change in this green bit here the temperature changes because there's a change in speed so there's a change in speed for the green one so if i just draw a green one like that so speed speed decreases kinetic energy decreases and temperature drops okay because temperature is the measure of your average kinetic energy of the particles now if you look at the pink color one the pink color one temperature is constant so temperature constant that means no change in temperature therefore no change in kinetic energy okay no change in kinetic energy there all right i think there's pretty much everything that i need to relay on heating and cooling curve which is the main bit uh, in this uh, part of the curriculum or the syllabus of course you can read through the rest of these where they are just um, well explaining or re-explaining what i have just mentioned about where there's a change of temperature where the temperature remain constant but what is important is what happened at the particulate level uh, is that um, when you are doing cooling the particles will release energy and therefore uh, the temperature drops whereas when you are doing heating curve the particles will absorb energy and therefore uh, they have to well you know the particles get further apart and you overcome the force attraction between the particles because the energy absorbed is being used to to break the force attraction between the particles they are not moving any faster during changes of state just like you are not moving any slower when you are at the change of state at this interface that's why temperature is not changing because there's no change in speed no change in temperature no change in kinetic energy but of course beyond that then you will get slower and slower moving uh, because your temperature keep on dropping there all right so thank you for watching don't forget to click the button on the bottom right to subscribe to the channel and uh, follow me at ptet.chemistry that is at ptet.chemistry on facebook instagram twitter and telegram and i'll see you in the next lecture tutorial